1027, 1035, WICY, your feel good favorites from the 80s and more. I'm John Kazar, joined by a guest who's been, you know, on here very frequently when it comes to the updates out of Alice Side Medical Center inside the community is Dr. Lisa Mark. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Uh, very well, very well. Trying to, you know, get reacquainted with winter because, you know, <laughs> December and January weren't really much compared to what we've experienced just in two weeks. It's crazy. Yes, for sure. For sure. For sure. And, and so general wellness, uh, is it coronaphobia? Is that a real thing? I think it is a real thing, just like pandemic fatigue. We're living in an incredibly stressful time when every symptom, like a cough or a runny nose, can make us worry that we're experiencing the beginning of what could be a serious medical problem. Nobody wants to get COVID, but what we're seeing is that some people go beyond general concern and get into territory that we call health anxiety. It's not the kind of anxiety that motivates you to take smart steps to protect yourself, but rather it's the kind that interferes with your daily life. It impacts your mood, disturbs your sleep, and even manifests with physical symptoms like a rapid heart rate, shallow breathing, headaches, and an upset stomach. None of that is healthy, but the good news is that if you're experiencing this type of anxiety, there are some things you can do to help yourself. I think we could start off by saying sticking with a healthy lifestyle is a good start. Absolutely. Eating healthy, getting enough sleep, exercise, and staying connected to the, to the ones you love, even if it's virtually. Exercise in particular can have significant effect in lowering anxiety. A term I've seen thrown around lately is uh, mindful acceptance. What does it mean when someone wants to practice that? So the physical actions we take can actually help us mentally cope with the stresses in our lives. If you're feeling anxious, it's important to acknowledge it and then consciously switch your attention to something else. It takes a little bit of practice, but a physical action like writing your worries down in a notebook, closing that book, and then moving on to something else can help you train yourself to set your anxiety aside. So moreover, trying to calm yourself, right? Yes. Our fight-or-flight response to stimulus is kind of ingrained in our nervous system, and it's a natural response to anxiety. But being in danger mode all of the time is exhausting, and there are some routines you can perform to help calm your nervous system. These are things like meditation, progressive muscle relaxation, or uh, breathing with your diaphragm that can put your nervous system back where it belongs. Yeah, and and when someone says to refrain from excessive checking behaviors, what, what does that mean? It, it, it means your anxiety manifests in, in a way that people constantly monitor themselves for signs and symptoms of disease. So oh. in this instance, there's nothing wrong with being vigilant, right? But if you're spending hours and hours uh, searching online for information about COVID or going from doctor to doctor seeking reassurance, that's really the kind of behavior to avoid. Sounds like Taking you're wasting time at that point almost, you know, and hours. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Right, right. Taking your mind off that kind of anxiety with other more useful activities can be a great way to help yourself avoid these behaviors. So to kind of bring everything full circle here, we, we want to change our mindset, right, Lisa? Absolutely. The way you think about yourself and your health has a big impact on your state of mind. So saying something like, I've been tired all week, I must be getting sick, is much different than saying, I've been working really hard and not getting much sleep, so that's why I'm tired. Gotcha. It's really important to question anxious thoughts and make sure there's not a more realistic assessment of what's going on. This is called cognitive reframing, and it can really help us break out of, of those patterns of anxiety and worry. Sounds cool. Cognitive reframing. I'm going to have to start using that. Um, I know for some <laughs> right. people it's fancy lingo. For me, I kind of look into this stuff a little bit, so, so it's all kind of natural sounding to me. But for a lot of people, I think just taking the some of the tips of even meditating or just finding ways to really calm down, it, it's going to go a long way. Right, Lisa? completely agree with that. I think meditation is a, is a great way to go. There are lots of good apps. If you're a, a technology-minded person, there are lots of good apps that can help you out with that as well. Beautiful. It's Dr. Lisa Mark with us. An, up, an update out of Alice Hyde Medical Center is what we do Wednesdays around 940 inside the community. Thanks a lot, Lisa. Thank you, John. All right, we'll talk to her soon. 1027-1035-WICY.